Luna. Your trusty reporter here for your 3 o'clock report. My oh my, have we quite the excellent show lined up for you today. Now as you all know, our number one reporter died on the job yesterday. Which makes me top dog. <laughs> Rest in peace, Jeff. I'm sure someone out there cares. Just not your wife, because she's sleeping with me. So anyways, we hired formerly laid off anchor Mike. Reporting from Granville Island, it's been 10 years. Great to have you back, Mike. It's great to be back, Gilead. <sighs> Are you drinking on the job? Cap, why is something wrong? Never mind. So what's in store for us today, Mike? I got quite the show lined up for you today. Have the whales finally gone extinct? Let's take a look. As you can see, there's no visible sign of the wild crustaceans. Mike, I'm not quite sure this is proof that the whale species has gone extinct. Do you see something I don't, Iliad? <laughs> Never mind, Mike. Um, I was told that you were working on a piece about the operations at the Granville Island Brewery. Why don't we roll that? Oh, oh yeah, of course, Iliad. Roll the tape. Okay, so welcome to Granville Island Brewing. My name is Jesse. How are we doing today? Excellent. Good. We're doing all the large 650 ml bottles on site, uh, and those are called the limited release seasonal brews. Okay, and our brewmaster Vern, who you guys probably saw walking through the back there, Vern makes about 10 different seasonal beers per year. That's exactly what that is. It's a principle that tells us how to make true and natural beer, which basically incorporates those four ingredients, malted barley, water, hops, and yeast. Some of the beers we offer bring in extra flavors. So a couple of those sounds today, one includes honey in the mix, one also includes wheat in the composition. We do beers with cherries, with spices, with ginger, with raspberry, we have beers with chocolate, vanilla, and caramel, uh, maple syrup, so once again, many extra flavorings you can put on top of the base ingredients that will add to the style and the characteristic of your finished product. malt the barley is because inside each and every shell there is starch. And by malting the product there, that will help develop the enzymes, which will later change the starch into sugar. And then later on towards the end of our process, we're going to change those sugars we've created into alcohol, thus making beer. Okay, so it's all about starch to sugar, and sugar to alcohol is the short form operations of our process there. Essentially, uh, we're getting barley from all over the world, once again doing lots of worldly beers. We get some from BC, Saskatchewan, Minnesota, Belgium, and England. Hey guys, the grist mill is a small machine here used to grind down the shells of the barley, now exposing all the starch that we're after. We don't want the shells, we want the starch. Uh, having done so, we're the very fine substance called grist, so grist being crushed barley. As you can see guys, all the white powder in the jar, this is starch, okay? And once again, that will convert to sugars there momentarily. As the grist falls down into the contact with the warm water, the hot water will now activate the enzymes from the garlic, now changing the starch into basic sugar. So the whole purpose of the first tank is about extracting the sugar value from the starch. And by mixing the contents for about an hour and a half there, we're left with a very thick and soupy substance called mash. And the brew kettle guys are now going to boil this stuff called wort for about an hour and a half. Uh, during the boiling function, we also integrate the third ingredient, which is our hops. Do you guys know what hops are? Yes. Yes? Okay. Kind of like, I don't know, are they from a like grain? Uh, well, it's, it's a flower, it's a plant. Yeah. It's actually the sister plant to the That's cannabis it. plant. And then having boiled the, uh, having basically melted the hops down, we can also pour in the extra flavors. So things like the vanillas, the cherries, the raspberries, the ginger, the maple syrup, the honey. Okay. <laughs> now guys, in these tanks, we're going to add what's called a top feeding yeast. Uh, what that strain of yeast does, it's going to feed up the sugars there, changing sugars to alcohol, 
Uh, all the excess yeast will start to rise to the top of the tank, hence being top feeding. Uh, we can take the lids off and scoop off all the excess. Now by storing an ale below room temperature, it takes us upwards of four to six days to ferment the back of an ale to extract the appropriate alcohol level. The equation is, the, uh, you know, the, the operations equation, I guess, would be the more sugars you provide the yeast at fermentation, the more alcohol we get back. Okay, so more sugar will create more alcohol. Okay, so, having aids of beer, guys, we don't want to filter up the last one the sediment. We still have some yeast in our beer and some very small particles. Basically, what we do is we pump the beer through that very fine dust. It catches all the small stuff, all the small particles, that allows the beer to pass through. Clear beer is stored in our final chamber at the back, on the left side here, called the bright tank. Okay, once in the bright tank, guys, we now put the finished beer into a keg or into a bottle. You can see our hand ball machine is capable of three bottles at a time. Okay, so capacity, three bottles at once. low-tech device capable of doing one ball at a time. Where do you work? Let's not talk about that. <laughs> or else people might not want it. <laughs> Mike is a valet driver and he's getting drunk before work. <laughs>